Deus Ex The Fall is something of a sequel and tie-in to Deus Ex Human Revolution. It's a first-person action RPG that details a series of events that occurred before Adam Jensen even got on the scene. Developed by Artus Montreal for Android and iOS systems, it's now available on Steam for Microsoft Windows. He plays a man named Ben, a former member of a special forces team called the Tyrants. Ben apparently earned his stripes in Queensland of all places during the, and I can barely say this without cracking a smile, the Australian Civil War. Operation Rainbird, right in the heart of the Australian Civil War. During which time he got hired by the tyrants, working with familiar faces, Namir and Barrett, who were main antagonists from Human Revolution. What, you afraid of heights, tough guy? I guess you're gun shy too, huh? At the end of the game's horrible prologue, Ben is betrayed by the tyrants and escapes with his friend Anna but is soon forced to come out of hiding in search of medications for his augmentations. And this is where the game properly kicks off. Now this was a game originally developed for much more simpler operating systems and you've got to keep that in mind when looking at it from a technical viewpoint. So pointing out the fact that there's low polygon character models or bad textures hidden behind layers of bloom and so forth is kind of redundant. Whilst it does look pretty drab, it does capture the art style from Human Revolution and there is enough detail in the environment that it doesn't detract too much from the gameplay. Anyone who's played Human Revolution will instantly feel right at home and the gameplay pretty much emulates it in every single aspect. The main focus is on something called augmentations. Ben, much like Adam Jensen, has access to a whole range of augmentations that will give him all kinds of new abilities and skills. This can be something as simple as muffling the footsteps he makes through to a cloak that renders him totally invisible. Almost every single action in the game earns you experience points, which in turn helps you to gain levels. Each new level comes with something called a Praxis Kit, which can be used to purchase new augmentations. One of the biggest differences is that weapons and items can be purchased at any time throughout a shop menu of sorts. Literally at any time you want, you can just pause the game right in the middle of the action and buy up all the ammo and grenades you want. This doesn't bother me too much, but it does seem a little bit casual and kind of removes tension, well, all of the time. One thing Deus Ex is always known for is the way it gives players a real sandbox approach to tackling levels. The main area in the game is Costa Rica, Panama, and the hub has lots of little back alleys and hidden routes. Walking in the front door is a viable option, but then again, so is going through the back door and shutting down all the security systems in the building. If a path forward seems too hard, then chances are there's always another way around, and the fall has made sure to keep that level of polish and freedom with the environments up to snuff. And this carries across to dialogue choices in cutscenes as well. I'm looking for a resupply of new pods. As was the case with Human Revolution, the most effective way to level up quickly is by taking a non-lethal approach and hacking the shit out of every single computer terminal that you can get your hands on. On the downside, the fall has also brought along a few of Human Revolution's problems, whilst also having a few of its own. Stealth can still be something of a mixed bag, and you never really know how enemies are going to react. Turn around. <laughs> Combat also isn't entirely stellar, and is downright horrible when you've got a bunch of guys on you at once, as quite often they always just seem to bum rush you. And I'm still not fond of the unskippable takedown sequences which magically teleport you into the middle of the room as it loads one of the preset animations. And this is where it all comes down to, whether or not you were bothered by these types of issues in Human Revolution, and whether or not you can stomach them once again. But hands down the biggest problem is that the controls are just really unresponsive at times, and this seems to happen most when you're trying to navigate menus. Basically, it happens when you try to click on something and the mouse just doesn't register at all. You can click and click until your finger goes blue, but it won't do a goddamn thing. It's really annoying during cutscenes when you're trying to click through to speed things up, but it's even more of a pain in the ass when you're in the hacking screen where timing is literally everything. Oh, and I really wasn't kidding about the prologue earlier. It's fucking horrible. It's full of all these unskippable tutorial scenes that drag it out even longer, and I honestly wouldn't blame people for giving up on the game before they even get through it. It's a real drag. But I did soldier on through it, and all things considered, I think the fall is damn good value. Obviously, if you've never played a Deus Ex game before, then this is the worst place to start, but as a spin-off for Human Revolution, it's a pretty admirable effort. I spent a fair amount of time exploring the environments, taking my time with all the side quests, acquiring most of the augmentations, and I clocked in at around three hours. Considering that it's only the first in a series of upcoming games, and more so that it's a mere $10, it's a pretty good deal if you ask me. 
Expecting this game to have the same amount of polish as human revolutions is just unrealistic. You'd spend a lot of time shifting through the septic tank that is indie games to find something for the same price in the same genre with as much gameplay. Hopefully in the next episode they'll flatten out the bugs and patch things up where it matters most. Keep walking, Og. I mean, welcome here.